Good morning, guys. It's Andy here again. Um, so today, I brought my lawnmower up for some maintenance. And so I thought I might as well give it a three-year review. Um, I had an old video on my channel when I first got it, and I thought, you know, these videos of when I first buy these pieces of equipment, they really aren't fair because I haven't ever gotten to use them a lot. So this is going to be the first of many that you'll probably see. This is... I've had this for about three years now, more than three years, actually. Well, no, it's about three years. Um, I bought this in December of 2015, or it may have been 2016, it may have just been sitting a while, but as you can see, it does say it's a 2015 model year. So I'm pretty sure I bought it in December of 2015. And this mower has been great. I mean, the engine has never had a small, has never had a problem at all. Um, the only reason what I need to do today is I have to clean the carburetor out because something, it's just surging a lot, so I think I just need to take it apart and clean it, but that's not a big deal. Um, as you can see, it still looks new. I clean that off every time I use it. I always... I'm very diligent at cleaning it off and making sure it's well lubricated and everything. But there are some minor gripes that I will go ahead and start with. And the first one being the infamous rear wheels. They've been doing this on many models, dating all the way back to like 2008. Um, and the problem is when you pull the mower backwards, even when the self propeller isn't engaged, which is right there, these wheels will lock up on you. And it's because the shaft, there's a bushing on the height adjuster and where the shaft goes into the bushing, it's very stiff. And when rust gets on there or when it corrodes a little bit, it gets extremely hard to pull back. Like the wheels just freeze up and sometimes it affects the self propel too. But thankfully, I was thinking about getting a new mower the next time the wheels just seized up on me, but thankfully I'm not going to have to do that because Honda issued a service bulletin, Honda Power Equipment, and it covers my serial number. Now, it's a 2015, so the three-year warranty's gone, but it says to replace these rear high adjusters with newer ones where the bushing has been widened. And if some of y'all in the comments could tell me if that repair actually worked, that would be great. Um, if the new height adjuster that they came out with fixed this or not. I've heard some people say it does, some people say it doesn't. But just let me know about that because I'm frankly unsure. I am going to go ahead and order them to see if it'll help. Um, and the new ones are identified by a little paint mark on the side of the height adjuster. And the ones I found on e-replacement parts, they had the little paint mark. So I think that I'm going to go ahead and order those and put those on. And it's a pain in the butt to do it as well. I've taken it off to sand it several times. And it helps for a little bit, then like two months later it's already seized back up. No matter if you spray it WD-40 on it or not, every after every use. That's what I used to do. I used to grab a little can of WD-40 and spray it right down in here and right into the bushing and it just doesn't do anything another gripe is the is these front wheels the surface and the front wheels are very very there's lots of play in them and as you can see these ones are sort of cocked out to the side a little bit and that, that's just from abuse or not abuse i'm gonna say use a better term for that um hard work over the last couple of years um they've taken a beating and they've held up fine but i think the ones in the hrx would do better because they have ball bearings these ones are just standard wheels and as you can see i'm gonna have to replace those probably at the end of the year which sucks but i guess it's a small price to pay for a, a very reliable and heavy duty lawnmower now to some of the pros, and I'm going to start with this engine. I came out with a video explaining why these Honda engines are better than those Briggs & Stratton ones. 
and that still holds true today. Sure, some people argued that the Briggs and Strattons have more sales, but these Hondas are just better built. And just because there are more sales doesn't mean it's good. Hey, just like the F-150. <laughs> um, but these are built like car engines. They've got overhead cams. They use automotive grade carburetors. Those carburetors are made by Keyhen, which makes the Honda throttle bodies. Actually, it makes the throttle bodies and the, the throttle body in this van right here is a key hen. I looked at it. The gas cap is automotive style. Let's see. Oh, there we go. You'll hear it click. So it's got an automotive style gas cap. Oil, very easy to check. Everything's very easy to check on this thing. And. I have seen both of these Briggs and Strattons and these Hondas in the shop a fair amount, okay? I've got one Honda sitting over there and four Briggs and Strattons. Um, but I've had some Hondas coming in and out the last couple of days. And, you know, I mean, these Hondas come in for just operator issues, like not draining gas out every at the end of every year like you're supposed to. So those are just operator problems. They're not problems with the engine itself. The only problems I've seen on these Honda engines are the overhead cams, the valves burn up. But that's because people overheat them and they run them on low oil and stuff like that. But these ones I've seen for a lot of manufacturing problems. And a lot of things that could have been prevented if they were simply made right in the first place. Um... Another thing I like about this lawnmower, this clip director, I can switch from mulch to bag just like that. Toro has something like that, and on the HRX series, you can actually, there's actually a little lever, you push it and you move it, and it sets what position you want it to be in, which is pretty cool. If I had to buy another mower again, it would probably be an HRX, just because of the plastic deck, but um, I'll get into that later. But this is very easy, and I don't carry the bag on all the time, but it's still very helpful because this is actually an integrated rear discharge chute. So if the grass gets too thick, I just switch it to bag, and then when it gets light again, I switch it to mulch. Very, very convenient. Another thing I like about this particular model is the rotostop system. And these have received heat for not working sometimes, but it's always operator error. It's always somebody not, not, they always like do this and they try to get to work on YouTube and it doesn't work. But that's their problem because you have to use two hands to do this. It's not a one hand thing or you will break these. If you don't use two hands, I've seen them snap because people tried to do this and they released the button too early and it snapped and it didn't work right. But this is a very convenient system. Um, it is auto choke. Um, I had someone comment on the last video. They were like, auto choke with a choke? This is not a choke right here. This is a throttle. So this is just your throttle. The choke is automatic. It's one of those thermal wax chokes, which I have seen those fail. But they're very easy to change out, and it's really not a large problem. But you've got stop, slow, low, and fast. As, as I've told, said, mine probably needs a carburetor clean because it nearly dies when I put it on slow. So I'm going to do that after I do this video. Another thing I like, smart drive. This is a very nice system, although the smart, the select drive is a bit better. I like that better. This is not a bad system. I got used to it very quickly. You just, you can set it in whatever position you want. You can set it all the way up here. If for whatever reason you wanted to, you could set it all the way down here if you wanted to. I've seen people they like set up here and use their palm or like this. They like to do that, and that's cool. I mean, um, it's definitely very cool. And I know that the uh, the older HRX series used this until they got Select Drive, but um, I really like the Smart Drive system. It's very cool. 
um, another thing, if we can tilt the mower over, and remember when you're tilting mowers over, always tilt it, especially on these Hondas, tilt it oil dipstick down or muffler down because the PCV tends to leak oil into the carburetor if you do it this way. And that's the same way on the Briggs and Strattons, so just be careful with that. So, this is your whole roto stop system under here. It's very convenient. Um, I sharpened the blades before this year started. It seems that they're already dull again. Um, but I did sharpen these at the beginning of the year, so they are ready to go. Um, I do all the maintenance myself usually. Um, I don't take it to anyone to do it. Because the last time I did that, I ended up getting screwed over. Um, and I wasn't very happy. That was by a steel dealer. So I usually do all the maintenance on this myself. Actually, I'm going to change the oil after I clean the carburetor out on this thing. But this NutriCut system, or not NutriCut, what is it? The Twin Blade Advantage, or whatever it's called. These two blades work very, very well. And they cut it into very small pieces. And these little mulch chocks right here, they push it back down. And this is such a good mulching mower. I mean, these are awesome little mulching mowers. Another thing is, this steel right here. I don't know what gauge it is, but it is super thick. I mean... I think it's like a mil it might be like a millimeter thick, which is very good compared to these MTDs. These are very solid, they're bulletproof. I just love Honda lawnmowers. Hmm. Well yeah, I think that's about it. Let's see, I've covered just about everything. So now would I buy this lawnmower again? If I was doing other things, if I had a different style of yard, I would buy it again. If I had a less rough yard, if I didn't have... I used to cut people's lawns too. I still do, sort of. But if I had a different type of yard, if it wasn't so rugged like this one, yes, I would buy it. Now, with that being said, I would probably buy an HRX. And the reason is because of the just the heavy duty construction, the composite deck that they use. And the plastic decks are not a bad thing. I've never seen one in here for cracking, and I've never heard of one cracking. They're they're the same material that football helmets are made out of. And it's the only plastic deck in the industry, just like how the Ford F-150 has the only plastic oil pan in the industry. And those melt, but I've never heard of the Nexite ones melting. Maybe Ford should start making their plastic oil pans out of Nexite. <laughs> Man, I've managed to fit two Ford jokes into this video. So awesome. Um, but I'd probably buy an HRX if I had to buy another one. But once these new um, height adjusters get here, I think that my issue will be fixed. I hope. And I think that I will once be happy again because I plan with this mower is going to go off to my parents when I go to college. It's going to stay with them and I'll come home to maintain it for them. But yeah. Um, thank you guys for watching and have a great rest of your day.